Welcome to Let's Talk, Ed and Zahi. We are in April, and it is Autism Awareness Month. And I know this is a topic that hits very close to home for you because this is this is the life that you live every day. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is <laughs> very close to home. is is <laughs> an understatement in many ways because <clears throat> I am. Uh, uh, autistic. My son is, uh, Philip is more severely autistic and, and, you know, those are battles I've been battling for 50 years now. And those are battles have, uh, been part of, uh, for his sake for the last 13 years in education. And, and, uh, today no different than <clears throat> the seventies and eighties when I was growing up, there's still a misunderstanding of what is what autism is and is not uh and very often you hear people saying well but everybody is on the spectrum right well no not everybody's on the spectrum uh and it's not because uh somebody doesn't like people that they're autistic right they can be soci sociopaths and you hear the cliche very often when there's a um, when there's a, 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 a crime somewhere that, uh, but he kept to himself, we wonder if he was autistic. Okay. Well, cut me some slack uh, there. Uh, so there is, there's significant misunderstanding. Higher education is not any better than any other segment of the, uh, uh, workforce. Um, and I want to talk about autism, not, and, and I said that to uh, uh, to a, a legislative uh, committee meeting here in North Dakota earlier in the month, actually on Autism Awareness Day, April the 2nd. I said, I'm not saying I'm autistic because I'm looking for pity, but I'm saying it to ask you to have mercy in your heart for the people who are struggling not because they're not doing, not because they, they're not willing to do, but because they cannot. And, and uh, we see it every day in our students. We see it every day in our colleagues. And very often we end up putting them in very tough situations. What are your thoughts? Why yeah, is it important to you? You know, for, for me, uh, growing up, I, I didn't really have a whole lot of exposure to anyone with autism that that I knew. And, you know, you, you look at the 80s and when I was growing up, it seems like, you know, autism still wasn't diagnosed uh, correctly as much as you see that correct diagnosis now. Um, Spot on. And, you know, you, you would see some people that probably now would be labeled as autistic that were just put into a special ed classroom. And that probably wasn't the right space for them at that time. But, you know, as we became friends and, you know, we talked, um, I learned a lot just how how different you see the world than how I see the world. And, you know, when you were talking about the person that that is kind of the quiet loner, uh, that is me to some extent. I'm a very introverted person. I, I'm somebody that I would rather be at home than be out with a bunch of people. And, you know, that, that rings true to me, but there's a, a, a chasm of difference between what we're talking about with someone who is autistic and someone who is introverted. And, you know, that's that's a distinction that we need to make. And I, I know as we've talked, you've talked about, you know, how much you have to work at some of the simple person to person interactions that most people, I think, take for granted. And, you know, I know you have made me think about a lot of the things because you've asked me, you know, well, why do you do this like this or something like that? And some of that stuff, truly, I just never even thought about. It's just something that I did. And 
you know, now thinking about that and, and thinking about, wow, you have to be very intentional with about everything that you are doing, you know, your your gestures, what you're saying, how you're saying it. Uh, to me, like that sounds exhausting. It is exhausting. Uh, the interesting thing is, uh, again, I'm going to make generalizations that, that may or may not be true, but I would, in my mind, at least for me, I I don't shy away from people because I don't want to. I'm not the loner, the introverted per person. It's because I don't know how to or I can't. And then very often I come across as dominating a conversation uh, to remind myself to look at the person uh, in, the, in, the, in the eye or the face is is hard work consistently hard work i'm very monotonous as you know in the way i i speak uh doesn't mean that i cannot be funny sometimes you know because there have been instances uh, once or twice maybe yeah well yeah i mean in 50 <laughs> years come on give me a break uh, uh so uh where where i've made people genuinely laugh but i've also been called the dumbest smart person. I've been called a jerk because I I have not responded the way people expected me to. I remember I interviewed for a private um, agrochemical company about 20 years ago. And the only reason why I wasn't taken and the person said it to me is he said, "You, we have a standard and it's a multinational company. We have a standard where you'll need to look at the uh, interviewing team's uh, direction for at least 70% of the time. Um, you know, those are their metrics. I'm not disagreeing with them, but uh, so if I'm blind, you wouldn't hire me uh, because I, because I, I, you know, when I was focused on the interview and the answering of the question, it, it became an even harder task for me to look people in the face and the eye. Uh, you know, you're going to see very commonly among autistic people, uh, you know, more limp uh, upper body. So our handshake is not the strong handshake that that, you know inspires confidence so and again those are generalizations i apologize i i'm you know i'm i'm more speaking about me and and maybe a little bit about uh, my son um yeah and very often as you know i've asked you how many times you know like tell me what you're feeling tell me what what you're seeing in the other person because i cannot decipher it yeah and you know, this is a challenge that, you know, it's very real for you, but it's very real for a lot of our students, too. Uh, you know, as they pursue higher ed, they they have to navigate through all of these things. Um, and, you know, obviously with, with autism, there's a diverse spectrum of mm -hmm where you are on that, uh, you know, how, how functional you are. And, um, you know, everybody is a little bit different. And as as colleges, and, and this is what we're going to talk about a little bit more in our upcoming segments, is as colleges, what are things that, that we can be doing to make sure that, that we are making our campuses a welcome place for students like you, for employees like you. So that is actually going to be what our next segment is. If you enjoy conversations like this, be sure and subscribe to us here on YouTube. Ring the bell down below. You'll get notified when we post new content. And of course, if you like or comment on our videos, uh, it helps the algorithm and helps find uh, put us in the the eyes and ears of other like-minded people. And of course, you can find Let's Talk Ed on all of your favorite 
podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.